Well, get on me old booties. How's it going? Pimp my parts caster. Episode 4, I think it is now. Um, sorry it's taken me so long to get back to you. I haven't done a anything for ages on YouTube. Um, but my analog life, unfortunately, has got in the way of my digital life. What can you do? Christmas, all that other rubbish that's just happened. So, lots of exciting developments in the parts caster. Basically, I've got all the parts now. Um, but because I haven't done an episode since the body... You haven't seen anything, certainly not on YouTube, unless you've been following me on Instagram, which you should all be following me on Instagram. I'm sure most of you probably are, to be honest with you. So, let's jump in and see what's new. First off, oh yeah, look at that shizzle. Shiny new neck. Very shiny pit guard. Ooh, brass pit guards. Some other exciting things. We've got some gold hardware, gold bridge, high quality Goto bridge. We've got Goto locking Goto tuning pegs. Very exciting. And we got some pickups. So we got some Tone Rider pickups. Tone Rider, Birmingham, Birmingham, Alabama. Or Birmingham, as we would say over here, and classic blues. I need to get a, oh fuck, that's what I didn't order. I need to get an aged pickup cover, something else to buy. So rather than eke this out and get f five different episodes, which I'm sure a lot of content creators would do, I'm just gonna smash it all together get it going rather than go, okay, I'll do the neck for an episode and then we'll do the bridge for an episode, do the pickup. So it's all happening right now. This is the episode where you're going to see all sorts of stuff. So we ended up getting a warmer neck. Um, basically, we had some issues with the neck. I don't really want to go, um, you know, saying any bad things, but unfortunately the first neck that I got built just wasn't quite up to scratch. Kindly got a refund on that and went for a warmoth neck so that's kind of put us a bit behind but anyway it doesn't matter now the problem that we had originally was that we had voted for a rosewood neck due to the the calamity of errors i couldn't get my hand on a rosewood neck so i did another set of polls saying you know would people be up for a different neck choice roasted maple perhaps or something along those lines and we basically threw the polls and everyone was like yep let's go for a different neck and i found this bad boy on warmoth which is, can you tell what this is? I'll let you guess what it is before I tell you what it is. That is actually mahogany. Would you believe it or not? Figured mahogany. So I thought this was super interesting neck choice because um, mahogany is the wood of choice for Gibsons. You know, like Les Pauls, SGs are made out of mahogany. So I thought it's going to be super interesting um, to have a mahogany neck on a strap. Um, classic tone wood and they use mahogany for necks on acoustic guitars so it's a really commonly used um, tone wood uh, supposed to be a bit warmer than maple obviously maple's the standard neck choice um, supposed to have a slightly warmer tone so it could be very interesting to see how it sounds um, we've got the standard thin contour neck which is basically just their fender sort of profile so you see it's quite, it's like a standard strat kind of carve. Um, it's got the gold Jess Car frets. Um, not super jumbo, just like the medium sort of standard ones. And it's got a 10 to 16 radius. What that means is the radius here is 10, which is a bit more rounded. So it's easier for fretting cords. And then as you get higher up the neck, the radius gets higher to 16, which means it's flatter. Um, which means it's easier for doing bending and so on and so forth. Uh, and I think that was pretty much the specs. I got it, um, and it's got holes for vintage tuners because we've got the vintage tuners. So that's basically it. Mahogany neck, 1060 in radius, standard carve, gold Jess Carve frets. Um, looks really nice. I'm really pumped about the neck. I think it looks fucking gorgeous. Now it came unfinished. Basically, I've just kind of got cracking on and actually started applying the finish myself. So I got this stuff, which maybe you know about this, maybe you don't. So True Oil. Now this is actually what um, they use to finish gun stocks. So basically what they do is they 
rub this on the gun stocks, the handles of like your rifles and all that, and then makes a super durable finish. Now, basically, you can use it on guitar necks. Really common, very popular thing. So if you ever played a, an Ernie Ball Music Man or something like that, it's kind of got that very light, oiled kind of finish. It's that kind of vibe. So I've literally I put on put on two coats of the True Oil. That's the neck, I'm very pleased about that. That ended up costing about 300 pounds landed. Uh, yeah, I think the neck cost about 180 quid, okay? And then by the time I put shipping on top, that puts up to about 230 pounds. And then with duty and customs on top of that, bumps up to about 300. So um, that's basically, if you're, in, if you're in the UK, if you want a neck of this quality, you're looking to your door at about 300 quid um, which is obviously you could get cheaper ones but it's totally custom spec this obviously they had loads of different ones on the website so you could get an ebony one or whatever you want so expensive yes quality yes you've seen the body already but I'll show you it again hey just a little uh, little flash glimpse of that so let's move on to this very snazzy pit guard. So we did some uh, polls and we voted for a brass pit guard. We actually were brushed. Now, the guy I spoke to said, do you want me to do it non-brushed? Because basic, the reason they did it brushed is because often there'd be machining marks. So what they do is they'd brush it to um, hide any like small imperfections. Now, basically the guy phoned me up and he said, I can make these now the perfect finish, so you're interested in that, so I thought, well, yeah, why not? It's an absolute bastard for fingerprints, so I need to give it a shine up, so I've been handling it, so it's a bit thingy at the minute, I need to give it a polish, really. So I need to get some Brasso, Brasso, and um, clean this up, because it's, I, I need, I should have got some, really, before I filmed the video, but I'm not going to go out and buy some fucking Brasso, just so I can do a YouTube video. I've already spent a thousand pound on the guitar, so you have to excuse a couple of grubby fingerprints. And against the purple, it looks absolutely great. I'm just going to hold it like this because I don't want to get my fingerprints all over it. So, but you get the idea with the purple and the. <laughs> it's going to look crazy. Well, it does look crazy. So, very excited about that pit guard purple guitar combination. I think it looks. Um, pretty snazzy so we went for all gold hardware to match the purple obviously um we've got a goto bridge here so this is the one with the six this is the traditional so we did a poll so if you want to go for like a more modern bridge like one of those wilkinson bridges or if you want to use the traditional bridge from an aesthetic point of view i'm not so keen on those wilkinson tremolos but this is the traditional six hole trem so if you see there we've got six screw holes so this is the traditional style and the saddles are also the traditional style so pleased about that that you chose for that and not the modern kind of trem so we've got the gold goto hardware there and to match the trem the gold locking machine heads as well we've got the we've got the locking tuners so we've got the little thumbnail there so it just locks the string we don't have to do like loads of winds and we've got the lovely traditional buttons there big fan of that look so very pleased. I've got these same tuning pegs on my Telecaster parts caster, which you're probably seeing right now. And they're fantastic. They look old school. They've got that vintage look from the front, the buttons, but they've got all the nice modern features. Right, pickups then. So we went for Tone Rider pickups. These are UK design, but they're actually built in China, but it's their own factory and all to their own specs so they they spec out actually i think that no, says on here so made in china from parts sourced internationally wire usa and japan magnets china forben usa nickel silver japan and taiwan plastics china so it's a mixture of parts um the wires which is i guess is the the most important component from usa and japan all spec by them now I've used Tone Rider pickups before, I've tried them on a friend's Telecaster and I thought they were absolutely fucking great. So that's why I chose to use them on in this build because they're for a price, they're great. The whole set was 90 quid, which is 
I mean, you pay 90, 90 pounds just for one pickup. So I've got the humbucker as well, and the uh, was it ninety? I'm pretty sure it was. It was a very. If it wasn't ninety, it was ninety five or something. Maybe for the humbucker, I'm sure it was ninety. Um, for a boutique pickup, you know, bare knuckle or something, you might pay ninety quid for one. What I'm going to do is leave a link in the description to this super interesting pickup shootout that I saw once on. Um, on YouTube now, most of these pickup shootouts that you see, where they compare the pickups, they're different guitars. And it's like, how can you compare pickups from two different guitars? It's all completely different parts. It's absolutely pointless. Now, uh, there's this one that I'm going to link you to. Is a guy who has, I think it's about seven different pickups, and he wires them all into the same guitar. So it's the same guitar, same amp, same settings, seven different pickups, and it's super interesting. So there's a couple of cheapies in there as well. So he's got like. Um, pickups from a Squire Mini, so you know those little mini Squires, pickups from that, another Squire, Fender Custom Shop, and then some Kleins and Ron Ellis, I think, so like, some super expensive ones, um, original 60s pickups, and some super cheap ones, have a listen to it, have a, have a look, listen to the comparison video, don't look at the description, so don't look at what the results are, just put it on, Put it on your headphones or high quality speakers. Have a listen. Look at the thing. It just says A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Mark down which ones you think are the best. And then have a look at the results. And let your ears do the testing. See if you can tell the difference between the Squire Mini pickups and the ones that cost 200 quid each. And I'll be surprised. To be honest with you, I, I, found, I thought the, the difference was pretty minimal. There wasn't a lot. And certainly by the time you're in a mix and you had, you know, you had a full band, I think it would be really hard to tell. You, you could get a bigger difference just by adjusting the tone knobs on your amp. So this is not to say I don't support, you know, handmade pickups because I would happily go and drop 250 quid on a set of pickups if I had the money to. For this build, I don't. And there are cheap other options out there. So have a look around, see what works for you. So, we are super close to finishing this. Basically, um, it was actually booked in this week, the neck, but because I hadn't got around to oiling it, um, I postponed it till next week. So, basically, I'm finishing the neck this week. In a few days' time, it's booked in with Pedro, my local tech in Brighton. Shout out, Pedro. does super good work. He's basically going to finish it. I'll do some little bits. I'm going to do the... I'll shield the cavity and do some little bits that I can do, but basically going to leave it to him to put it together, finish it. So... Literally next episode, it should be finished. Don't forget to subscribe, to like, smash the subscribe button. Isn't that what all the cool kids say? Um, thanks for being here. Thanks if you got this far in the video. You're the MVPs. Pit my parts caster. Next episode will be up in two weeks and it's going to be finished. So if you want to see any progress before then, follow me on Instagram. I think that's it. Until next time, guys. See you again, me old booties.